My fellow pilots, good morning and welcome. I'm proud to stand before you today, not only as a pilot and ALPA member, but also as a fellow steward of our collective mandate to responsibly and effectively manage the finances of your union. The finances of ALPA International are sound. Through your hard work, you've made tough choices and focused on our future needs rather than focusing simply on past practices and rebuilt our finances to where they are today. We are moving forward in all aspects across the board. The operating contingency fund has recovered and it is at its best financial position since 2003. The major contingency fund balance has been stabilized and beginning next year, it will be recapitalized with dues money for the first time since 1994. We focused our efforts on being cautious guardians of our members' hard-earned dues dollars by looking for ways to do more with less. Those efforts have paid off in a secure future as we continue to move forward. Those efforts are also reflected in an agenda item before this body, the second proposed dues rate reduction in as many Board of Directors meetings. This strongly indicates not just our confidence in our ability to live within our means, but also our commitment to continue to do so in the years ahead. We've also been able to provide support for our ALPA airlines that need it most. By pooling our resources, we were able to continue supporting our pilots during negotiations and mergers and providing the same levels of service in all other aspects of their professional careers, from fighting off threats like Norwegian Air International and temporary foreign workers in Canada to advocating for known crew member. We put the collective force of 51,000 pilots behind our efforts. Now, as we move into the numbers, I want to note that the strength of ALPA's finances reflects the strength of our commitment, not just to the members of our own airline, but our commitment to every ALPA pilot, regardless of the plane they fly, the insignia on their hat, or the number of stripes on their sleeve. Now, as we look at the audited results for 2013, a deficit of more than $15 million can seem inconsistent with trend positive, but it's not. It's important to know the context for why these numbers are the way they are. Two years ago, the Brady lawsuit was an unknown factor. We believed that we had done nothing wrong, but we faced the possibility of significant damages, and the outcome was uncertain. In 2014, ALPA settled this suit, and I'm pleased to say that our cash reserves and insurance completely absorbed these one-time costs of both the defense and the settlement of the lawsuit. We didn't need to borrow a single dime to fund the settlement or seek any additional funds from our members. It is a sign of our financial strength that we close this chapter without causing more than a one-off, one-year deficit. Now, if we look behind the deficit, we'll see the continued trend of increased revenue and decreased expenses. In 2013, we budgeted for more than $113 million in dues revenue, while reducing more than $128 million, the highest level since 2004. On the expense side, we held many of our line items at the 2012 levels or lower. As we move through 2014, those positive trends continue. Our actual dues income continues to exceed estimates by close to $7 million, while our expenses continue to fall well below budget. In the administrative and support account, expenses are currently almost $3 million less than what we budgeted. We continue to see the benefits of this costless approach to expenditures at all levels. MECs are generating a surplus of almost $1 million, while the national committees are running an $800,000 surplus. As we progress through 2014, we're running a surplus of more than $9 million and expect to be comfortably in the black at year end. This continues our upward trend. 
It also shows the strong effects of the comprehensive review by the Special Committee for Finance, Structure, and Services, which was established by the President in 2010. SCUFFS, as we quickly dubbed it, streamlined processes and procedures, increased transparency, and examined how ALPA spends every dues dollar. You can see how in just the past four years, we have taken active and effective steps to stabilize and improve ALPA's finances. We are developing conservative projections of our revenue upon which we base ALPA's budget. This not only makes sure that we live well within our means, but it also plans for the unexpected. In both 2013 and 2014, actual dues revenue far exceeded dues estimates thanks in large part to increased flying levels and profit sharing. These results are consistent with our conservative approach to the budgeting process. By keeping a tight rein on these estimates, we create budgets that exist firmly and cautiously in reality and never venture into aggressive speculation. In 2014, we are on track to book the largest dues revenue in over 12 years, more than $800 million over our estimate by year end. And in 2015, we are budgeting over $135 million in dues revenue. Also, through innovative agreements with management, we are seeing more of these dues dollars stay with ALPA and put to work to achieve our MEC's objectives. Many groups have negotiated agreements that provide for company paid flight pay loss, while others have managements reimbursing them for negotiations and merger related expenses. For many years, the operating contingency fund was depleting at a far quicker rate than we were able to replenish it. Just six years ago, this fund was broke. We were only able to continue the fund by moving monies over from the major contingency fund. This fund, however, is not a luxury. Instead, it allows ALPA to provide every pilot with the same level of service no matter where they fly. It backstops those MECs that may need additional funds to address the unique challenges they face. In 2010, we put into place new policies and practices, such as expanding the Contingency Fund Oversight Board. And we've also seen fewer MEC deficits, allowing us to put money back into the fund and rebuild it. Because of your efforts and discipline, this fund has not only recovered, but continues to move in a positive direction. Indeed, we are allocating an additional $200,000 in funding each year to replenish the OCF, which will continue to allow it to provide for MECs in the midst of extraordinary circumstances and extended bargaining cycles. As of August 31st, the balance stands at more than $7 million and continues to grow. For most of the major contingency funds history, the fund was self-sustaining. It relied on a conservative investment strategy for its income, and for the most part, these returns sufficiently met the demands on the fund. Then, just a few years ago, during a global economic recession, we were hit with a double whammy of decreased returns on our investments and significant demands on the MCF, including prolonged negotiations by several of our pilot groups, litigation, bankruptcy, and strike-related activities. This depleted the fund well past our comfort zone and made us reconsider how this fund is sourced as well as how it was allocated. We established guidelines that not only standardized allocation levels, but also how the money could be utilized. But that only reorganized the outlay. We also needed to address the funding side of the equation. Next year, the MCF will receive $500,000 in off-the-top dues revenue to accelerate the rebuilding of this most strategic asset. Currently, we have more than $45 million in the MCF ready to help safeguard our pilots and our profession. Just this year, the MCF provided $1 million to support our successful ongoing Save Our Skies campaign that defends our industry and our professional brand. We are also proactively confronting threats to our careers with the help of this fund. As we look forward, ALPA is, continue, or is counting 
on all of you for your continued support and guidance for the MCF and to use MCF allocated monies wisely, cautiously, and effectively. In just a few short months, we will turn our calendars to 2015, and with a new year comes a new budget. I'm pleased to report that the Executive Council unanimously approved the Association's 2015 budget. As part of that budget, we projected dues income of $135.4 million. This figure is derived from actual dues revenue in 2014, and then adjusted for pay scales in existing contracts, pay raises, changes in flying levels, fleet plans, pilot payroll, and profit sharing. Also included in this budget is the proposed dues rate reduction from 1.90% to 1.85%. Earlier this year, at the Executive Board's direction, we built the 2015 budget based on a presumed 1.85% dues rate with additional monies that would be available under a 1.9% dues rate to be held as a strategic reserve fund, which works out for 2015 to be $3.6 million. In addition, the board directed the Executive Council to determine whether a, a dues rate of 1.85% would result in any adverse effect on services or on MEC income. At its August meeting, the Executive Council unanimously found that the approved budget based on a 1.85% dues rate would not have an adverse effect on services provided by ALPA or on MEC account income. In September, the Executive Board endorsed that recommendation for a reduced dues rate, and now that question is before you, the Board of Directors, ALPA's highest governing body. Now, while lowering the dues rate may have an inherent appeal to our members, we as ALPA leaders must balance that appeal with our duty to provide representation that our members expect and deserve. Our pilots depend on ALPA, its leadership, and its staff for services, expertise, and guidance. However, they also depend on us to use their hard-earned dues money as we would our own by getting the most value for their dues dollar. Indeed, it is our duty and our obligation to operate our union as efficiently as possible. The budget for the ANS account reflects our continued commitment to fiscal responsibility while continuing to provide the level of services our members need and expect. We continue to maintain our staff resources while seeking for ways to keep costs stabilized. Through a successful reorganization of ALPA staff, we are doing more with less and doing it effectively. In closing, all of us at ALPA are not just part of our own individual group, we are all part of ALPA. We are part of a force within our industry that protects and enhances the careers of all airline pilots. At ALPA, we have the unique ability to pool our resources, to create opportunities for all instead of just for some. It is this cooperation that allows us to respond quickly and effectively to our challenges, whether it be the turbulent state of our regional industry or the attacks from Norwegian Air International and others. As Henry Ford once said, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress, but working together is success. We are not measured by our past. Yes, it defines the organization we are today, but we are measured by our ability to work together as one union, our willingness to speak with one voice, and harnessing our resources to help those in need today, knowing that it could well be any of us tomorrow. We will continue to look for ways to provide better, more effective services to every ALPA member every day. It is because of the work of the pilots in this room and at every MEC meeting and LEC meeting in ALPA that we are the leader in the aviation industry and the beacon of our profession. <coughs> Excuse me. It is, our, <coughs> it, is our, 
It is our legacy as well as our mandate. And I thank you for your work, your sacrifice, your patience with my voice. And on behalf of the profession and our pilots and our families and my doctor, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.